Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to look at something, question I'm asked quite often and it is about art reproduction or how to print your artwork. Now I'm using a very generic term of artwork here, covers a whole load of different things and I'm going to try and cover a few examples and whilst not in necessarily the depth you need to do it, uh, I've got lots of other videos that cover aspects of printing, paper selection, colour management, print quality, printing on cards, all kinds of stuff. So this is really an overview because I was recently asked by somebody, and I do welcome questions on this because they could often give me ideas for these sort of talks. They wanted to reproduce some artwork. Uh, the problem was they didn't want to spend much money on a printer. Uh, they didn't want to uh, do any complex using a computer and they wanted high quality. Uh, well, it would come hopefully as no surprise that I said not a hope. Um, effectively for art reproduction, and it is a, a very technical area of photography and potentially very expensive area of photography to do well at professional levels, you've got three choices. Those are better, cheaper or simpler. And the thing is, you pick two of them. If you want better and simpler, it ain't going to be cheaper. If you want cheaper and simpler, it's not going to be better. Anyway, let's go through a few examples. And I've got, as I say, I've got lots more covering all the different aspects of this that I've, I've covered in the past. But this is just pulling together the principles of what's involved. So you can decide whether you want to do it yourself, whether you want to get someone else to do it, or whether you don't want to go anywhere near it. And that's a perfectly valid choice. But it depends on whether you're doing this for business or just for personal use. So first off, you need to get your artwork into a printable form. Now I'm going to use, yeah, as an example here, this is an Epson P700. Uh, it's a pigment ink printer. I've got lots of uh, articles and videos covering using this printer. It's a high quality printer. Can produce very nice prints on it. Now, I'm assuming you want your prints on paper. If it's canvas, then perhaps a bigger printer might be better because then you've got enough space to wrap the canvas around. But you can print canvas on this and smaller printers as well. Um, I'm not saying you need a better printer like this, but it's one of those trade-offs that you look at. So I've got relatively simple printers as well, which I've covered, which I'll get onto when I look at some specific examples. Right, so we'll start off, I have, let's say I have an arbitrary artwork. Um, years ago, I used to do oil paintings. Um, I haven't done for a few years now. And let's say I want to reproduce that oil painting. Now, because I know this area, I know that it is a topic that is fraught with technical difficulties and all kinds of other stuff. If I was to take it to a professional art reproduction house, they might well use a camera like this. Uh, this is a Hasselblad HD6. This is the 100 megapixel version. There is a multi-shot 400 megapixel version. Uh, this one is currently probably about 20,000 pounds worth. If I wanted the really high resolution, I'm looking 40, 50,000 pounds worth of camera. Um, as I said, doing this properly is not cheap. So here we have you know, a very high-end camera. Do I need a high-end camera? No, not really. It depends on the kind of quality that I'm after. Um, you can get perfectly good photos from an iPhone. Now, they're not going to be anywhere remotely like you can get this, but it depends what you want and you know, what size you're reproducing things. Now, once I've got the photo from this, um, I'm obviously going to need to process it and do something with it. But in getting a photo, and this goes for using an iPhone as well, for using one of these, I will use a color checker card. And I will include this um, in the photo. I'll take a photograph of this, lit with the lighting I'm using for reproducing the artwork. 
then I'll take a picture of it. I may do all kinds of tricks with custom camera profiles and various other things. In case you're wondering why this is in a plastic bag, one of these will set you back 250 pounds or thereabouts. So I don't really want to get finger marks and things over it. So it lives when not in use, it lives in a drawer, in its cardboard case, in its plastic bag. Uh, that is a high-end uh, target which you use for colour management. Now, there's a cheaper version, fortunately, and this is one that I carry around with in my camera bag. And here we have a colour checker card, colour checker passport. Perfectly good, useful. The key colours are at the top here. Now, and the idea is that you take your photo and you include this in the picture, these colours here. These have the users as well, but these are the key colors that you use. You also get a gray target as well for setting your lighting balance. Lighting is an important thing to consider though when you're doing uh, art reproduction. At its simplest, if I want to photograph a picture, I want lighting with no reflection. Now this is a print on a matte paper, so there's no reflection problems. This is a glossy one and you can see there are reflection problems. The classic way of taking a photograph is to have your camera looking straight down on the artwork and the artwork to be lit by two light sources, one on either side at 45 degrees either side of the artwork. That minimizes shadow. Now, for a picture like this, I'll say it's a watercolor or something like that, no problem there. But let's say I'm doing oil paints, I have texture. So you need to consider how your lighting is going to affect the texture. And this is where it comes in maybe using polarized light, all kinds. As I said, this is a very technical area, but you don't need to do it. You can take pictures with an iPhone and two desk lamps. Now, the picture that you get out of that, as I said, is gonna need some work on it. But get the lighting right, get a basic picture, and you're away. You've got an image to print. Now, you can also scan your artwork. Depends on the scanner you've got. I've got an example, I've got a video that shows the process using an Epson ET 8550, which is an ink tank printer, so it has big tanks of ink rather than the cartridges of this. It's not a really high-end printer like this from a quality point of view, it's good, but it's not in the same league as say this P700 here or the larger P900, but it has a scanner on top. Now, using target like this or one of these and calibrating the scanner. I did that to get it just that little bit more accurate. I didn't use the Epson software. I used some slightly better software called ViewScan and I scanned the artwork. Now this is produced, this is a, a, a print uh, from a friend of mine. Uh, it's a watercolor and I created a Christmas card from it by scanning it, processing the image and then printing it. Printers like this, take card perfectly well. So if you're looking at scanning your artwork for making cards, perfectly good with these sort of things. I've got lots of other videos that look at aspects of what cards to choose, how to get the card printing right in different printers. But so I won't go into any of that. But suffice to say, I was able to take a scan of this card and process it. Now, even with a scanner here, I mentioned getting the lighting right if you're photographing things that some of the image you can see here is actually caused by the texture of the paper. So be careful with that if you're scanning artwork that you don't introduce too much of the texture of the paper as opposed to the actual artwork you're scanning. Now, it may be something that you want to include, but you do have to think about it. Uh, and that's where adjustments in scanning comes in and that's how you set things up. So I've taken the picture, I've got it. Whether I've taken it on yeah, li literally this, this camera when it came out cost more than I paid for this house. Um, all right, I've lived here a while, but even so, puts it into context. And this camera is currently worth about 20 times what my car is worth. So uh, we're talking, you know, this is serious business you have to be to afford kit like this profitably to use it in a business. If you're just rich and you want a, toy, you know, you know, a rich man's toy, then yeah, these are great. But uh, these are professional tools and they do have their uses. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be doing a load more about using this camera, about aspects of it, because I've had something similar before and never covered it in videos. Uh, there is an article or two about it, but not in videos, but that's high-end stuff. Let's say I've taken my picture on my iPad 
or my iPhone. How do I print that? Well, the simple way is just to go link the two up to your printer, because most printers will do this wirelessly these days. And I just press print and out it comes. Yeah, that may work. It may not work. I'd not put a great deal of money on it working particularly well because it's simple and it's cheap. So we've declined on the you know, better, cheaper, simpler triad. We've knocked off better for it. If I want to use something like an iPad, and this includes iPad art, so this is using your iPad to actually create art and then print it. It's a tricky thing to print directly from an iPad to a printer. Much better to transfer the image to a computer, tweak it, look at it there, use the software that's available there, and then print. It's vastly superior, vastly more predictable. Um, and this, makes it a little bit simpler in some ways because it is a more predictable process. Now, iPad art. What's the expensive version of getting your iPad art? Well, um, take the David Hockney approach. You create your art on an iPad and then you hand it off to a minion who has all the necessary technical skills, equipment and whatever to be able to produce prints that you can then oversee and go, yes, that's good enough. So there you go. That is the best solution. It's a simple solution because I give no concern to the printing whatsoever. It just ain't cheap hiring someone with the necessary skills to take iPad art, run it through a computer and print it. So once again, it's that trade off and it applies at all levels from just simple artwork making cards up to art that's going to be exhibited and sold for ludicrous amounts of money. So, you know, it, it applies right the way through. Right, so we've got our image into the computer. What about printing it? Well, first of all, I always suggest if you're going to be printing something, even if you're not doing anything else in the way of color management or anything, get a standard test image. And there are, I've got articles and videos about this and downloads of them. Get a standard test image, print that. Because if that test image comes out wrong, now, it doesn't have to match the screen. You'll be able to see with the, with the test image whether it looks okay or not. And we're not worried about what it looks like on the screen because the artwork, the final print is the thing. If that looks right, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the screen. You're not attempting to match screen and print here. Get a test image, print it. If it looks okay, then that's good because it means there's a fair chance when you import your artwork, that things are going to print okay. Um, so take st a step back, make sure that your printing is okay. That goes, I've covered this with loads of my printer reviews and things uh, about using test images, setting up printers. That goes for Epson printers, goes for Canon printers, goes for whatever. Start with a test image like this, because if the test image comes out wrong, you've got something wrong, or you've not connected something up correctly, you're using something wrong. Goes for me as well. If I can't print a good looking test image, I've made a mess somewhere, I've got something wrong. And it saves me lots of running around in circles trying to pin it down if I first use a basic test image like this. And they're free, cost you a sheet of paper. Um, no great hassle. Could be a small, could be an A4 size sheet of paper. Doesn't have to be a big sheet. Doesn't even really have to be expensive paper either. You're just testing that things work okay. So, what next? Personally, I would want to make sure my screen was set up correctly. But then that's coming from a, a viewpoint where I'm happy to use kit like this to set things up. Come as no surprise. There's also a device you can use to calibrate your screen. Absolutely essential if you're doing high-end art reproduction. You need a high quality screen and you need it calibrated and profiled. You need everything setting up. Turns out that if you're just printing your art and going through the computer, you don't necessarily need it, but it can be helpful. Certainly if you're going to start adjusting the image. Now, in terms of printing the image, I'll use Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is massive overkill for a lot of people, particularly if you've produced just your image on an iPad using some software on that, and you just want to print it, and you want it to look good. Photoshop is useful, but Photoshop fails. It's not cheap, it's not too expensive, but it's not cheap if you don't use it, and it's certainly not simpler. Is it better? I would say quite often it is, but you need the skills to use it. 
What software would I use? Well, for this particular printer, Epson printer, I would suggest using the Epson print layout software. Now you import your standalone software, Mac PC, import your image into that software. It's got all the settings to use to print. Now I've covered this in all the printer of Epson printer reviews. Likewise for Canon, Canon have a print layout software, Canon print software. That's also free software. You can also just import your image into it. If you're going to be doing any adjustments, it help if you're confident that your screen is okay, but you don't actually need it. Use the Canon software. It will drive all their better printers. So I've looked at the Pro 200, Pro 300, and bigger printers as well. It will drive those and it'll do it. What happens if you've gone cheap and you've got a cheap multi-purpose printer with third-party inks from a shop down the road? Well, I'm going to say all bets are off. Good luck to you. Um, you've gone for cheap. You've gone for simple. Uh, better has gone out of the window. But doesn't mean you can't make good prints with cheap printers and cheap inks. They, the prints may not last, so I'd be very wary selling them to somebody. They may not last all. Maybe six months and they'll start to fade. But it's possible to do it. What I would say, if you're using a cheap printer, cheap inks, cheap paper, and printing direct from a phone, if you could make a good print, then you have, that day, I would say, go and buy a lottery ticket as well, uh, because your luck's in. It just doesn't work well. So, really, let me just sum up, it comes down to, you can use as expensive and complex kit as you like. That's the high end of art reproduction. Um, now, I don't really go there. I don't offer this as a service, as a commercial service, because I'm, I'm a commercial photographer. And I'm going to be honest here and say one of the reasons, and you ask anyone who does art reproduction, and if they're honest, they'll tell you this, it is also you need the ability to work with artists. Now, I come from far too much of a technical and scientific background, hence why I'm happy with all this stuff here, um, to necessarily always be able to interpret exactly what artists mean when they say they want a particular look in a print. I'm afraid I'm the person who goes, yeah, but what do you actually mean by that? What do you mean by luminance? What do you mean by glow? What do you mean by feel? That's why sometimes it really is best if you print it yourself. However, people who work in art reproduction have lots of skills in doing this and they know that and they'll produce test prints. Uh, artists come in, look at the proofs, comment on them. The people will then edit them, change things. But it will come as no surprise to you, this costs a fortune to get it done well. So once again, it always comes back to better, cheaper, simpler, pick two. So there you go. Now, I've got lots more stuff. I uh, hope this gave a bit of an interview, you know, introduction to uh, the whole area of art reproduction and printing your artwork. It needn't be complicated. It can be complicated and expensive. But there are certain things you can do to improve the likelihood of it actually working. Please feel free to ask questions uh, with the video here. I'll put a few links to the test images and other stuff like that. But... Um, Best of luck. Um, you know, it's doable. These prints, these cards, they looked almost identical to the original watercolour. Now, right, they're Christmas cards, so people are not going to be overly critical of quality. But that just took a basic printer, a scanner, and a printer, and it worked. So there you go. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. As I say, the questions are always welcome because they give me ideas for things that people might be interested in. And uh, thank you for watching.